Welcome in the name of Jesus. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd, Wednesday of Pentecost II. Sunday was the second Sunday after Pentecost. Today in the Gospel lesson, we'll hear our Lord speaking a parable that uh, is very meaningful and very important to uh, attend to in terms of uh, what spirits uh, are leading us, whether it is the Holy Spirit or some other spirit. Let us rise for the confession, page 194, in the front of the Lutheran Book of Worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us make confession to God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you, and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercy, for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Forgive my sins. Give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. Through his Holy Spirit, he cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God who has called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose never-failing providence sets in order all things both in heaven and earth, put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 12th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Our Lord teaches, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he passes through waterless places seeking rest, but he finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and brings with him seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. So shall it be also with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside, asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a curious thing that in our day, many young people and not so young people really enjoy living in a fantasy world. I was just reading a, a brief blog item this morning about not only virtual reality, but the new completely adjusted reality. And uh, I'll share a link to that in my weekly email this Friday. It's very fascinating, the, the number of young people who are very obsessed with fantasy rather than reality. And so this article goes on to talk about how the, the, this fellow takes his young children uh, to the park and uh, is showing them all of the wild animals. And meanwhile, 
someone who is playing Pokemon is saying, did you see that? And a fantasy creature here and there and so forth. And he said, very curious. Here he's showing his boys God's good created order. And this fellow is living in a fantasy world. On the one hand, uh, we understand that uh, today, according to surveys, recent surveys, the largest number of people confessing no faith in God in the United States uh, has uh, achieved this highest percentage ever, particularly uh, among people uh, who absolutely live in a different world and have different gods, although they would never call them that. And a lot of young people, a very large amount of young people. So on the one hand, we have this increasing draw towards fantasy and towards uh, alternate realities, as it were. And on the other hand, here is God's good created order, and people are rejecting the creator, the one who loves this world and all that he has made more than he loves his own life. It's a curious thing because it puts us in an unusual uh, place for evangelism and many times I think we're afraid to engage that culture, particularly to engage our young people with questions, lots of rational questions. Because it is there that we begin to discover what people fear, love, and trust above all else. And so this past Sunday we were looking at the first of the Ten Commandments and Martin Luther's large catechism, and he says, whatever your heart clings to, whatever you put your great trust in, there is your God. And even people who uh, confess God and would say that they are quite pious, many times the God to which they cling has no resemblance at all to the God who has made himself known in human flesh, the God who has shown himself to be a community within himself, who invites and wants indeed all to be drawn into his eternal life and love. So it's a curious place we are. Today in this gospel lesson, our Lord is speaking about what happens after an exorcism. Well, again, um, there are young people that probably would say, I don't know about this thing about exorcism, and yet are drawn very much to a fantasy world and to all sorts of... Uh, angels and demons and so forth uh, through the various fantasy games they play and the video games and the movies and so forth. So it's a very, very curious place we are. I'll tell a couple of quick uh, vignettes. One young man I grew up with who was able to kick his heroin addiction but only by substituting uh, methadone and continues to this day to regularly go for methadone treatment uh, in order to be able to survive without heroin. Was a very handsome and talented young family, uh, fellow, but he came from a very um, hugely dysfunctional family. One of the things I learned over the years is it has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, amount of affluence or education of the family or even their reputation in the community. Some of the most horrible situations I've seen have come from highly educated um, and very affluent families. And this young man came from a, a family that was certainly subtly in the upper part of the middle class. And yet he became a heroin addict. Um, his parents were high functioning uh, alcoholics, upstanding drunks, as they say in the AA. So the young man um, was getting by without heroin, um, but with the help of methadone. And a community of drug abusers, of which he had been a part, uh, came and drew him back into the life. And by the time he got back off, he was a shell of himself, and he continues this day on methadone. Um, very uh, sweet good-hearted young man um, who had the world in front of him and was shattered. Um, the other was a fellow that I knew quite well who um, was able to get
get off of his addiction to alcohol and uh, was particularly regularly participating in Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, as the habit, the new habit of sobriety uh, took over, uh, well, he stopped going to AA. And uh, he continued on sober and uh, certainly was involved in a church community. But um, he became a very resentful and very bitter man. Um, oftentimes they'll say in the in the 12-step program that resentments will get you drunk again. Um, he did not get drunk, but he was certainly um, a hollow shell of a person, even though I'm sure um, had a much more functional life uh, without alcohol. Uh, but there was a bitterness, a hardness to, to his soul, and that we participated in the church community, um, really, again, back to what our Lord was uh, demonstrating today, when you get rid of a demon and you don't put something in its place, and in this case talking about letting God be the one who fills the God-shaped hole in the soul, which is the problem for addictions of any sort, that when you don't have God filling the God-shaped hole, um, when your daily routine, um, maybe you've cut out the thing that has been slowly killing you, that has been your favorite God substitute, but then the Lord God has still not filled that empty place in the soul, and ultimately Jesus says, things are worse uh, on the other side of all of this, because uh, having swept out, now the space is available uh, for occupation. I think there are a lot of people who um, are in the general age group in this room who, um, having been greatly influenced by rationalism, uh, sort of have listened to lots and lots of sermons over the years of, that sort of, uh, the, the fancy phrase used to be demythologized, to take a text and sort of take, um, take all of the, um, the notion of, of angels and of demons and, in fact, of a very real and palpable God away and sort of reduce everything to sort of, well, all we really need to do is just uh, educate people and, and, and uh, sort of reinterpret everything rationally. And of course, it's where we ended up in uh, so many of the churches today is uh, having taken pretty much God out of it. It's just simply become sort of a, a do-gooders club that gather together occasionally for worship and raise some money for this good cause or that good cause. Um, uh, Sometimes even uh, believing that my church is the uh, is my political party at prayer, uh, and certainly a lot of that in America, where my political party uh, is at prayer in this denomination or that um, dreadful sort of stuff. When it's reduced to that, so what is the what is what is it that God wants? He wants us to fear, love, and trust him above all else, as we talked about on Sunday. And, and so if we are to, in fact, have him remove the demons from our lives, those things that are not God upon which our heart, to which our heart cling and upon which we rely, if we're to get beyond that, um, really it's a daily drowning right, of the old Adam, the old Eve in us, a daily returning to baptism, a daily confession of sin, and what do we put in its place? Well, this Sunday we'll be looking at the second commandment, uh, which Luther calls the friendly commandment because God doesn't want us to misuse his name. He wants us to rightly use his name, which is with prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And that is precisely what needs to fill the house when the house is cleaned out. It's a devoted life of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, not just on Sunday or on Wednesday noon or whenever we gather for the services of God's house. But a daily pattern, think of how uh, the young man with the methadone program, well, he replaced heroin with methadone, and he makes a 70-mile drive every day, uh, well, 70 miles one way every day to go get his methadone. Um, the other fellow, whatever it was that filled that space, I, I think it was largely resentments, filled that empty space. Neither one is uh, really the better. Uh, certainly, they're better off that they're not uh, 
uh, still on heroin or alcohol. But indeed, what would have been life-changing and what can be life-changing is when day after day we renounce the devil, his works, and his ways. And every day have in that place um, disciplined life of scripture reading, of prayer, of praise and thanksgiving, and certainly gathering often so that we actually receive the Lord as we will today in the bread and wine, not just his benefits, uh, not sort of symbolically, but actually receive the Lord Jesus in the host and in the cup. So I'm grateful that you are here today. This is, the, this is where we need to be for the God-shaped hole to be properly filled, that we may go forth and uh, not be an empty house waiting for some new and strange demons to fill it, but that we may be um, increasingly whole growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, regularly communing, receiving him. So as we come today again, um, the life of prayer, of praise and thanksgiving is not about us. It's about what the Holy Spirit wants to do with us. And so we look again down at our empty hands and we say, well, it's not me. And we come and we receive Jesus in these empty hands and in these empty mouths. And he fills us and goes with us to daily fill the hole that only God can fill in the soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, many of our uh, people that tested positive for COVID in the last couple of weeks have greatly improved, and for that we praise and thank God. Um, couple with asthma had a little bit rougher time. On, I had that experience in January when I had Omicron, and, uh, those of us with asthma, nebulizer treatments will, will help frequently getting those breathing treatments daily to open up. So at any rate, we're praising God that those, those folks have, uh, they're all on the mend and said it's kind of like a really bad cold is what they had. Um, happy news, uh, Lauren Thornburg, whom we've been praying for, uh, gave birth uh, early this morning, about one this morning, uh, to Theo Braden, uh, who... Um, um, came about three weeks early. Uh, you may remember Lauren had some pretty uh, scary um, side uh, issues in the pregnancy early on. We've been praying regularly for her. Her uh, father is a uh, sometimes worshiper and, and dear friend of the parish, a great prayer warrior. And so rejoicing with uh, Lauren and her husband and older son and uh, her parents at the joyful news uh, that Theo Braden is here. Um, others in our prayers will remember today, um, those especially continuing to undergo treatment, uh, those of our, uh, us recovering from recent surgeries or facing surgeries, and I'll just ask you to name those names aloud at the right time. Let us rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of today, for life, breath, all that we have, all that we are, that you continue to bless us richly and abundantly with more than we deserve. We thank you for good news in our lives and particularly the work of healing that uh, you have been doing in body, mind, heart, spirit, and relationships. And so in all things, we praise you for the gift of your Son through whom we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this broken world, uh, so oftentimes assailed by very real demons, dark forces, things that we cannot see, but nevertheless are, are there uh, taunting and tempting and indeed driving people to do horrible things. We pray again for the Ukrainian people and uh, pray for uh, this land and, and those who presently are so driven by by fear or hate, and especially those who suffer with mental illness and are not treated, uh, praying again that the community would recognize these and uh, rise up in order to stand firm against the forces of evil among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of Theo Braden Thornburg and for 
um, a safe delivery for mother and child and continue to pray your blessing upon their family. We thank you for those who have received healing from your gracious hand, um, who were tested positive for COVID and are recovering now. We pray for those who are continuing to undergo treatments, particularly remembering Joel and Cindy, also asking your mercy on those who receive infusion treatments, uh, those who are rehabbing and recovering from surgeries, and those who are facing surgeries, and especially we name those names aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of this Holy Communion in which you give us your Son's true body and most precious blood, the medicine of immortality, for the forgiveness of sins, for eternal life and salvation. As we come to the table with empty hands, draw us more nearly into your life that as we go forth, that others may see in us the sign and evidence that we have been filled by you and you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, whatever else you see that we need, we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Um, just a quick uh, word to you uh, new phone directories will be out this weekend in the narthex and you may uh, take one copy uh, per household but just be watching for those this weekend and again thanks to those who contributed uh, on father's day weekend for canines for service about two thousand dollars received for this ministry that uh, prepares dogs um, to uh, be given to uh, disabled veterans and wonderful wonderful program and thank you for your support of that now the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in christ jesus amen the peace of the lord be with you all uh, for those not of your household still a bow or a wave As I do it each week at this time, I invite you to find in the front of the Lutheran Book of Worship the section um, in which uh, many of the psalms are found. Uh, I've often joked that there are some psalms that apparently were too dangerous to be placed in the Lutheran Book of Worship. I was told the answer was, oh, well, we ran out of room. And I could think of uh, a number of hymns that could have been omitted so that all the psalms could be there. But then again... Um, I'm never short of opinions now, am I? So, uh, Please find a psalm to meditate on and um, some of the great ones that are particularly fruitful as we are uh, approaching the Lord uh, in need of healing. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Psalm 139, which is, uh, emphasizes God searching us and particularly as you're wrestling with the God-shaped hole in the soul, uh, Psalm 139 can be so fruitful. An older African-American pastor told me one time that if one prayed that fervently every day for 30 days, it really will change your life, and there's a lot of truth in that. There are many other good psalms there, but mentioning those. Um, let's prepare our hearts and minds to receive our Lord as he comes to us in this, his holy self. Please rise and turn to page 68 in the front of the Lutheran Book of Worship. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, 
maker of all things, through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We give you thanks, dear Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of all the ages to save and to redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread, and giving thanks to you, he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in the same manner also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering then his life, death, and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people, and we ascend your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this, the true body, and the most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen we pray lamb of god you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. May this your body strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. Amen. And what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from all my enemies. May this, your blood, strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy Father, touch with your healing hand those gathered in this room and those worshiping with us online. You know our needs before we ask, and so we pray healing for hearts, minds, bodies, spirits, and relationships. You know where we most need your touch this day. And so we pray in your son Jesus' name that you would drive far away the old evil one with his taunts and lies and empty promises and would work healing in us so that as we go forth we may serve joyfully here and with your saints forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now go into the world to walk as the children of the light and the blessing of Almighty God the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit be and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. If any would like to kneel at the altar for a healing prayer, you're welcome to do so. <laughs>